Hello everyone from the World Health Organization headquarters in Geneva. My name is Alexander Kuzmanovic and it's my pleasure to have with us today Dr. Rosmond Lewis. Hi. Hi. Who will actually respond your questions on COVID-19 in workplace. So we are saying that uh, WHO is saying that uh, responding to COVID-19 outbreak, it's not job just for health sector. So we are working with different industries representatives um, and different sectors uh, to respond to the outbreak. And please uh, feel free to ask your questions through the comment section here on Facebook or to hashtag AskWHO on Twitter um, on how you can protect if your employer, how to uh, protect your employees from COVID-19 or if your employee any other interest you have on this subject, please um, ask your questions. Um, before we receive questions from, from viewers, um, would you tell us what is the role that employers can play in the COVID-19 response? Employers can play a very important role in uh, preparing for or responding to any situation where people are concerned about coronavirus disease, COVID-19. That is both whether there's a case in your community or not, even if people are just concerned about it. Uh, thank you very much. Would you remind our viewers first how COVID-19 spreads? COVID-19 is what we call a respiratory uh, infection, which means it can be spread by coughing, the droplets that you spray a little bit when you talk or when you cough or when you sneeze. So it does not travel long distances, but it does travel about this far to the person next to you. And so it's really important for people to uh, keep a distance of about a meter or so, three, three four feet, uh, from someone who's coughing or sneezing because that is how you can uh, catch these uh, infections. Thank you, Rosamund. Um, so what are the simple public health actions that employers can put in place to protect their employees or their business partners? Sure, Alexandra. So in the first instance, the public health actions that the employer can put in place are the same as for everyone else. The number one action is hand washing. This can be done with soap and water and it can be done with hand sanitizers, alcohol-based hand rubs. To do that as often as possible, certainly before eating, before or after uh, handling maybe door handles or elevator buttons, things that are touched frequently by other people, especially during the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere or likewise in other parts of the world. It is from these frequently touched places that uh, people can acquire viral infections. So it's really important to wash your hands, but equally important not to touch your face afterwards. Uh, or, I mean, before, when your hands may be dirty. So pe people don't realize how often uh, we touch our faces, our nose, our eyes. And so it's really important to just try and remember to control that impulse. Keep your hands clean. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or your face, or your mouth and uh, keep a distance from anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, are there any actions that employers should do if COVID-19 arrived in their communities? Absolutely. Because this is an infection that can infect uh, almost anyone, there's some things that are important to know. One is that still, most people who acquire this infection actually have a very mild illness. And uh, that's just to reassure you that it, it can be very serious in some people, but most people have a mild case. So for those uh, where it is serious, it tends to be the older, older folks. Um, as we get older, we are more vulnerable to all kinds of infections, and this is no exception. So employers can provide information to uh, employees through a whole range of means. So one is posters that you can put up in your workplace, communication messages through email, this kind of uh, information medium through social media. And also what's really helpful is to have uh, perhaps a talk in your workplace, depending on the size of your workplace, either from your uh, occupational health and safety support office or from your uh, staff health services. If your business is small and you don't have that kind of support, you can reach out to a local healthcare provider or to your local public health unit. Uh, there are many um, professionals in the community who'd be probably happy to help with this. Thank you very much. Um, so once again, just a reminder for everyone, today we are talking about COVID-19 in workplace. So feel free to ask your questions to our expert, Dr. Rosmond Lewis. Um, can you also explain to our viewers, please, um, what if someone needs to go on a business trip? What are the actions to take or what is the, the information they need, to, they need to know? Absolutely, so there are things that you can do. First of all, 
what we're saying is that it's, you need to assess the risk. So is this business trip necessary? What is the location? Has COVID-19 been reported there? Is it possible to hold this meeting through any other means, whether it be video conferences or teleconferences? If the person needs to go, then there are means to protect uh, the traveler by preparing them before the trip, during the trip, and when they come back. So before the trip, you want to make sure that uh, they have the maximum amount of information available, the latest information available on where COVID-19 is being reported. Of course, busy places like uh, airports or train stations, they can of course uh, pose a slightly higher risk. So it's really all about managing that risk, being prepared, being aware, and then when you're in a destination, make sure to follow the uh, requirements or the recommendations of the local authorities. They can be public health authorities, they can be security, police, but when you're somewhere where a situation may evolve very quickly, uh, be aware that you may need to follow the instructions of the local authorities. It's uh, not necessary to wear a mask. I'm sure many of you will uh, be interested in that. The, the mask is really mostly helpful for people who are already coughing because it protects other people from the results of that cough. Uh, the Most of the masks that are, that are out there right now, the thin surgical masks, uh, they don't really protect directly and it may be that we are using too many masks um, because who really needs the mask is the health workers, the nurses and doctors who are treating people in hospital. So we recommend that you use a mask if you're already sick or if you're looking after someone who's sick. But otherwise, we're not recommending masks in a general sense. Uh, thank you very much. We also meanwhile received a question on uh, masks, if you can just clarify as well, not when traveling, but in the workplace that maybe community is affected by COVID-19. Uh, do you still yes. recommend that employees should all wear masks or, or not? Now remember that COVID-19 is one type of infectious virus. There are others. There are common cold viruses, we could name a few, there's the flu season. Uh, these are all infections that spread in a similar way through the mechanisms that we've already talked about. So it's important if someone does actually have symptoms, whether they have a cough or fever or a runny nose, that ideally they would just stay home. If they're not that sick, you could offer that they telework from home. Ideally, they would not be in the workplace uh, where they can infect others. If they are in the workplace, then again, if someone is actually having these kind of respiratory symptoms, we would suggest that the person who's not well is the one who's wearing the mask, not everyone else. And there's another reason for that, is that we've um, seen that when people wear masks, it's unusual, it's uncomfortable, it's not something they're used to, and in fact, you may be ending up touching your face more often than without wearing one. So you maybe want to adjust it, and then of course, by the time your, your mask may become damp, um, in fact, you can, that mask can spread the infection even more easily, especially if it's not put on properly, removed properly, uh, disposed of properly in a closed bin. So we don't want to cause greater risk by everyone wearing masks uh, for long periods of time. So if you are going to use one, then please do check what is the right way to wear it and the right way to dispose of it. Thank you very much. Uh, this was really great uh, explanation. Um, we are getting more and more questions and uh, here is one from Laura Patricia Lopez Meneses. Uh, are there any special recommendations for employees from airports? Well, that's a very good question. So an airport is a workplace like any other. And again, it's about risk. So what is the risk in your workplace? What is happening in your community? And clearly an airport or a train station may be a place where more people are passing. Now, if you're just passing someone, in, you know, if it's not that crowded or you're not that close, just passing someone in a shopping mall or in an airport is not something that's gonna increase your risk. But if you are uh, at the front lines and you're actually screening, passengers who are coming, you are approaching them, you are taking their temperature perhaps, or you're asking questions, and you may be just less than a meter, or hopefully not less than a meter. Uh, you want to uh, be mindful that you may wish to wear a mask in that situation if you think you're coming in contact with people who uh, you are screening, especially if it's likely that the contact may be reduced to uh, less than three feet. Thank you very much. We have a next question from Estemarie Luna Vargas from Dominican Republic. What's the best way to practice prevention in a call center setting where headsets are shared and facilities are closed and air is recycled? So 
Oh, another very great question. So in a, in a setting where you may be um, constantly touching surfaces, we didn't talk a lot about surfaces yet, so when somebody coughs or sneezes, the droplets may drop on whatever's in front of you, whether it be your desk, a table, a telephone. Um, and so in those circumstances where you are likely to be touching surfaces, especially if they've been touched by others, that you want to do everything in your workplace to keep those surfaces clean. So regular disinfectant with just ordinary uh, kitchen <laughs> disinfectants, uh, chlorine, that sort of thing, really simple things. But doing it regularly is the important thing. So uh, making sure that your, your desk and surface area is clean. If you're coming into a workspace, a booth maybe, that somebody else has been using, you want to be careful. You don't want to be too worried, but you want to be careful. Then feel free to use wipes or, or regular disinfectants to clean the surface. Thank you. Um, there comes a question from Sergio, Sergio Lopez Lara. What is the recommended frequency for wiping surfaces with disinfectants? Again, uh, there may not be a, an absolute answer to that. It may be, is it your workspace? Maybe you do it at the frequency that you're comfortable with, once a day, twice a day, once every two or three days. But if you're sharing that workspace with other people, then how frequent how frequently is that workspace exchanged? And mm -hmm. have you seen anyone in the vicinity coughing or sneezing? Uh, you don't necessarily want to wait for that, but uh, if, if, it's a, if it's a heavily trafficked workspace, mm -hmm. then you might want to do it more often, maybe several times a day. Thank you very much. Um, here's a very good next question. Uh, what about library where people bo uh, are borrowing books? So books are a type of surface which, first of all, if they're on the shelf and they're there for several mm -hmm. days or weeks or months, then most of them are not likely to be infected in any way. Secondly, they won't also be infected if there's no COVID-19 in your community. So unless there's COVID-19 in your community, it's not something you need to worry about at all. And finally, books tend to have, um, if it's a more of a porous surface, uh, it's possible that the virus doesn't survive as long on that surface. Uh, if you are really concerned, you can wear gloves. If you're dealing with mm -hmm. materials that you feel are being touched often by others, you could wear a pair of gloves, but again, be very careful. When you remove those gloves, first of all, don't touch your face with the gloves, and secondly, remove those gloves carefully and bin them in a closed bin so that you're not reinfecting yourself from the surface of the gloves. But in most cases, you wouldn't need to worry about this. There's still relatively few cases around mm -hmm. the world. We are seeing outbreaks. We're seeing uh, outbreaks in, in specific countries and we're seeing a, a sporadic case here and there. For the vast majority of you watching this right now, it's not something you should worry about. Thank you very much. Uh, we go on the next question from a viewer on Twitter uh, who says that he works with clients with poor respiratory hygiene. So his question is what, what should he do, he or she do? With the clients? Yes. Well, it would be helpful to know what, what why that person has uh, what type of client, so I, I don't have the answer to that question, but depending on the type of client, if it's someone who maybe is ill or coughing and you have no choice but to be in very close proximity to them, uh, you may want to share with them the fact that you don't feel like shaking hands because you're concerned about uh, what's happening right now, um, but uh, don't be too worried. Just say that right now you're not shaking hands with anyone. Or you might say that uh, we appreciate if we just keep a distance of, uh, of a, a meter or so, or you may wish to place your client across a table from you, and you may wish to, to limit the time that you're with them uh, to a shorter period of time. And really, as I said before, for most people, this is not a concern, but definitely there are other viruses that can be transmitted in this way. So that practice, those practices are always, always good. You can ask them to cough into their sleeve. We haven't talked about that yet either, that when people are coughing or sneezing, ask them to do this. You do not want to cough into your own hands and then go and shake someone else's hand. That is a no-no. You really, you really have to protect <laughs> others from your own cough and sneeze, and you can politely ask others to do the same. So let's just... Um, summarize here what are the main ways of protecting uh, ourselves and others from getting sick what hand washing and so what are the other other tips you, you recommend right. so absolutely hand washing absolutely uh, keeping your hands away from your face uh, you may um, use a Kleenex if you're not comfortable with the with the elbow but if you do that bin the Kleenex immediately don't leave it lying around keep your surfaces tidy and clean them regularly with disinfectant these are many ways in which you can, uh, you can protect yourself. And for the workplace specifically, really if you are an employer and you're watching this, you should consider what are the risks in your office? 
What is the traffic in your office? What are the offices like? Are they uh, cubicles? Are they closed offices? If it's an office, it could be a different type of workplace altogether. And then manage the risk accordingly by informing your staff uh, and your clients, of course, yes. Uh, of, of these simple measures that really will protect all of us. Of assessing the risk that you have when people are traveling for business or even traveling for family mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, they want to be aware before they travel, when they travel, and also when they come back. They want to be aware of, of any risk they may have been exposed to. And go and discuss it with your um, staff health or occupational health services. And then you want to also consider maybe having a preparedness plan or a business continuity plan. Because if, if COVID does arrive in your community, you may be uh, now uh, listening to your health authorities say, okay, we need to maximize the number of people that are staying home for whatever reason, or you can't travel in and out of a location. Again, this is not happening in very many places. But it would be a good idea to start working on a business continuity plan so that you can have policies in place. Who can telework? When should they telework? Uh, and, and various things like that. Do, do all people need to be in at the same time? Can, can the work be spaced out? And it may depend if it's, a, if it's a manufacturer, it's a different situation. But again, lessening the number of people that are coming and going, uh, especially in a circumstance like that, can be very helpful to reduce the risk for your uh, office and your company. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have a very relevant question coming from Ruder Avenado Buluran. Uh, he says that a lot of employees are commuters and it worries them especially um, as they don't know who they encounter with while they commute. And then uh, the question is, should companies activate remote working if available instead of wait for a worse outbreak? So there's two quite different questions there because we just talked about remote working. I'll address that one first. So the remote working, it's, uh, it's up to the company policy. Uh, you need to know what is the comfort level in your company. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that you put in place ahead of receiving uh, COVID-19 or another infectious disease in your community, then it's something that you can practice. You can work on mm -hmm. it. People get used to it. Managers especially can get used to having their employees working from a distance. You can fine tune those policies so that when you do have to implement them, if that becomes the case, then you're actually more comfortable doing so. So practicing that uh, and having policies in place in advance of any emergency is actually a really good thing. Then the second question was about public transport. So for public transport, that's a concerning question because you are there in a bus or a train and, and, and you, you feel that you're crowded in. But the same rules apply. If you're touching the pole, of course, we don't want you to fall over and have an accident. So by all means, make sure first that you're safe and secure. So hold on tight, um, but then don't put that hand to your face. Keep it by your side until you get home and wash your hands. Or you can have a little bottle of sanitizer or you can have wipes mm -hmm. in your pocket. And if you feel that you've exposed yourself to um, an unhygienic or frequently touched environment, then you can deal with that straight away. So that's a, a good plan. Um, and then in terms of crowding, that's up to you as an individual to decide, are you getting on that bus or are you not getting on that bus? Um, but of course, if you are on the bus, make sure that you protect your own cough with a tissue or with your own mm -hmm. elbow and protect the others around you and uh, just try not to be close to someone who is coughing or ask them quietly to do the same, to protect others by coughing into their elbow. Thank you very much. Uh, here comes in the next question. What's your advice for employees who have business meetings in affected countries? So this is a very good question. Uh, whether to plan a meeting or not is uh, an important question. So the first question, of course, for the employer is, how important is this meeting? Does it need to go ahead? The second thing is, how can this meeting be held in a way which reduces risk? Because remember, we're just managing the risk. And the risk may be very close to zero, but it's never zero. So how do we manage that risk? You can manage it by having some people telework or mm -hmm. video conference in. You can manage it by having a webinar. If you're going to have it by having a meeting in your premises, it depends on the size of the meeting and how many people are attending. A really good practice is simply to make mm -hmm. Make sure everyone knows where the washrooms are. Make um, the dispensers of the hand sanitizers available at strategic locations. You could have your staff health services come in and give a two minute talk at the beginning of the meeting to say that you're all aware that there's a, there's a situation in your environment. And these are, the, these are the practices that we're going to be put in place during the meeting so that everyone is protected. And then of course, the important thing is part of your preparedness plan should be to know who to call should you have any concern um, what to say when you call. So it's good to plan this in advance. If you're having a meeting, by all means, go ahead. Contact your public health authority or your health services or your healthcare provider in advance to say, here's what we're doing. 
you know, what advice would you have for us? Or maybe you can just find it on their website. What advice would you have for us if, uh, if we have a situation and we need to call you? If you do have a situation, has that question come up yet? No, not yet. <laughs> If you do have a situation and someone in your workplace is unwell and they're coughing and sneezing and you don't really know where they've come from or you do know where they've come from and you're concerned, just make sure that part of your plan is to have a location where you can put them. It could be apart from the others. It could be someone's office. It could be a nursing station. Um, it could be a location where just so that managing risk, remember, is also managing the perception of risk. So you're not just managing the actual risk. You're managing how people feel how they react, what they think. And so your best move is just to have a place where you can ask mm -hmm. someone to sit quietly, depending on how ill they are, um, and know how to handle that situation while everybody else just goes on with their business. I'm taking a message here that uh, actually employers have an important role as well about, about in communicating with their employees the risks, right? Thank you. Um, we have a next question. Uh, what is your advice for social workers who are exposed in poor communities? Someone who's working in a poor community may be exposed to a different type of environment, but basically it's the same situation whenever you're working with someone. Uh, if you feel that there's a situation that is evolving, that you need to call someone, uh, know in advance who you're going to call mm -hmm. or what you're going to do. Uh, if uh, I think that our, our emergency services mm -hmm. certainly are, will be fully trained, paramedics and, and emergency vehicles will be fully trained as to know what to do. But most of the time, there's no reason to suspect that there's any higher risk in a poor community than any other community. Everyone, it can be equally affected, and the vast majority of people right now are not at risk mm -hmm. at all. Uh, so it's the basic common practices of protecting yourself and helping to protect other people so that uh, you're not coughing on them and they're not coughing on you and that would be the number one thing again hands don't touch your face keep them clean mm -hmm. and you can protect yourself and the people you're working with whatever community you're in um, there is a question as well how are cleaning work workers being trained to properly clean and des desinfect surfaces in the event of a broader outbreak so that's an important thing you need to consider in your preparedness plan and in fact it should be a discussion that you're having already with your cleaning services as to how are they actually doing it right now. Are they doing a good job of cleaning surfaces? Are they, are you have concerns? Let them actually just describe to you what they're already doing mm -hmm. and then have a conversation with them because after all they're the professionals mm -hmm. and so they should be able to advise you as to what, uh, what they think they, should, they can do differently if they need to uh, ramp things up or just um, have a conversation so that you actually know. Because the, the biggest source of fear is the unknown. And if you don't know what your cleaning services are doing, then it's a good time to ask them. Thank you very much. Uh, we are getting uh, several questions on uh, what about gyms where, where everybody's touching everything when they're doing their training. So one of the things about this disease that I feel that it's important to share with you is that what we have learned is that when people are becoming ill with, and I'm going to talk about COVID-19 right now. I mean, there are different infectious diseases out there, as we've already mentioned several times. But for COVID-19, what we've learned is that the onset, the beginning of the illness can be very mild. It can be a low-grade fever. It can be a dry cough, a slight cough. And so when people are, if someone is becoming ill with this, it can be quite mild to begin with. And in fact, they can be out and about, they can look well to other people, they may take uh, medication mm -hmm. to make themselves feel better, and uh, they may continue going about their business. So this is something specific that we've learned about this illness, that people can have mild symptoms and transmit. So the important thing is not to worry over much about this, but to realize that even if someone is only mildly unwell, they could still um, spread it mm -hmm. if they have it. Of course, if they don't have it, they can't spread it. But if they have it, this is a situation. So it is a possibility, there is a chance, that somebody could still be well enough to go to the gym and so on. Again, what is the situation in your community? Has anything been reported in your community? And number two, standard practices. If you're working at a gym, that's fantastic. It's great for your health. Keep it up. Just keep your hands clean. Mm -hmm. And don't touch your face when you're working with the gym. Go straight to the uh, locker rooms afterwards and, and clean up, and then you'll be fine. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question coming on, what about the uh, situations inside the plane, both for flight attendants and passengers? Are there any special recommendations? So there are special recommendations. They're already online on the WHO website, which is uh, www.who.int. 
So there, uh, this work is being done not alone by WHO, but in conjunction with uh, the International Air Transport Association and other uh, industry leaders who are already um, making information available to uh, specific cadres of, of uh, workers. And this is the airline industry is obviously one of them. So the airlines will all have their methods that they're putting in place to protect their, help, their workers as well as their passengers. Thank you very much. Um, Rahul Pradhan is asking, does good air circulation reduce risk of COVID-19 transmission in a workplace? If yes, would open windows be better or use of AC? It's a good question. We don't think at the moment that COVID-19 is being transmitted through ventilation systems. It doesn't seem to be the main driver of the outbreaks. The outbreaks are being driven primarily by person-to-person, -person, mm -hmm. direct person-to-person -person transmission through respiratory droplets. So ventilating a, an open space is, is always a good idea. It's always a good idea to have fresh air coming in. Um, probably open windows are just fine. Mm -hmm. There's no need to have air conditioning on specifically. And uh, again, the same measures apply. Thank you very much. Um, can infected, Jenny Weber is asking, can infected persons spread the disease when they are touching items around us? For example, a credit card machine at our local store or when they're checking out? So the concern about the spread from the virus on surfaces is, is a legitimate concern and it's, uh, it's what everybody's worried about. Again, it, things that are frequently touched could hypothetically be a source of concern. Right now the virus, what we know about it, which remember this didn't exist eight weeks ago, so we're learning a lot and we're learning fast. Um, and we're sharing everything we're learning with you. Uh, but sometimes we may say we just don't know. So at the moment what we know uh, from uh, a study and from comparison with other coronaviruses, because there are other coronaviruses out there, not just this one, is that um, this virus can survive on surfaces for a few minutes, a few hours, or in certain circumstances, even up to a few days. Uh, this is not to worry you, but just to remind you that it is hypothetically possible. Mm -hmm. We are not seeing a huge amount of transmission through that route, uh, spread, I should say, through that route at the moment. Uh, but again, don't be afraid, go about your business. As long as you wash your hands and don't touch your face, you will not be transferring anything from the surfaces around you to your uh, orifices, mm -hmm. right? your mouth, your nose, mm -hmm. your eyes. Uh, this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to transfer anything from a frequently touched surface to your face. So the main messages are, if you're touching uh, surfaces, just wash your hands afterwards and keep your hands away from your face. Thank you very much. The next question comes from Maria Vera. What are the measures someone can take if he or she works in a church? A church is indeed a workplace like any other and if you're working in a church it would be the same. So you have uh, areas in your workplace which may be frequently uh, touched uh, by by the community, mm -hmm. um, by other workers, and you want to know what those are, and you want to have a, maybe a system mm -hmm. in place for cleaning them um, as often as you feel they need to be clean, but uh, at least yeah. uh, consider what are the frequently touched surfaces and, and keep those clean. As for yourself, the protection is the same. Keep your hands clean. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. We had a lot of questions on different workplace settings and how to protect ourselves and prevent uh, infection from spreading, but um, there is the question, what shall we do? Sh should I stop going to workplace if someone is sick at my work with the COVID-19? I think if someone is sick with the COVID-19, they would not be at work. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know that someone has that. Um, w lots of people have the sniffles right now uh, during certain, certain parts of the world with flu season and so on. If someone has COVID-19, they will not be at your workplace because if they know that they have it, that means they've been tested and they're positive and they will be immediately isolated by the health authorities at home or in a different facility or in a hospital, depending on their level of, of uh, well-being and health. So you needn't worry about having other people in your workplace who may be infected. But again, it may be in the early stages if you have it in your community and, or if someone has traveled from a location where COVID-19 is being reported be aware that uh, people can come back to work. We have at WHO received our international team back from China. We have our colleagues who are going around in our workplaces mm -hmm. and it's, it's because it's not, um, it's transmissible person to person, but through close contact. So we are not concerned about people coming back from those locations, but we do have to be very mindful. And those people who may have been exposed, if it's in the community or through travel, mm -hmm. must be very aware that if they start feeling the slightest bit unwell, they need to immediately go home or report to their health services and let someone know. The important thing is to let someone know. Don't let it drag on, right? 
Yes, thank you very much. Um, is there any uh, specific advice for employers when one of their employees is found to, to have a COVID-19? If your employer is found, your employee yes. is found to have it. Well, uh, again, it's the same situation. In this case, what you're dealing with is if an employee has already been identified as having a case, then there are some things that you can expect to happen. The first thing that you can expect to happen is that your employee won't be at work anymore. Somebody will have already told them to stay where they are or to report to a hospital. So that employee will not be at work anymore. However, what we're trying to achieve right now with these uh, imported cases and outbreaks in different places is what we call containment. So in order to contain a new outbreak, uh, what we're doing is public health authorities around the world are doing what's called contact tracing. So if someone has been identified as, as a person with this illness, then the public health authorities will interview everyone in their surroundings. They will interview their family members. They will interview, yes, their coworkers, and they will ask about the extent and degree of contact. They will interview people they might have gone to the nightclub with the night before. They will try and trace all of the contacts of that person who is ill. So what you can expect is that you may be interviewed and you may be asked mm -hmm. questions. But the important thing as an employer is to reassure everyone in your workplace. It's not because someone has been in the workplace until yesterday mm -hmm. that you are necessarily at risk. But again, if you think you've been exposed to someone who may have this illness, then you need to be very mindful yourself of the slightest feeling of being unwell or fever or dry cough. Those things, as they appear, don't tough it out. Don't go to work. Call your employer. Let them know uh, your situation, what your concerns are, and, what, and ask them what you should do. You can call your healthcare provider, and you can call your local public health authority to ask for advice. Thank you very much. Um, there is another question. How to deal with people who recovered from COVID-19 and come back to work? So at the moment, from what we know, is that people who do have this illness are recovering. Most of them are recovering. And however, they will be unwell for a period of time, maybe some of them. Some of them may be, as I said before, not very greatly affected at all. So what, what the health uh, services are usually doing in these situations is basically where it's possible to do so uh, is to test the person. If they have been confirmed to be a case of, mm -hmm. of this new illness, then they will test them until they are negative. And once they are tested and they are negative, then usually they are released either out of hospital or, or back to their communities. And many people around the world have already been released, so to speak, <laughs> from, uh, from the health services that where they were or, or allowed to return to work because they have tested negative. Thank you very much. And how about pregn pregn oh, sorry, pregnant women? Are they at higher risk and should not uh, work anymore? So pregnant women are not considered at the moment to be at higher risk than other people. As I said earlier, we are learning all the time. And uh, anyone can be at risk, hypothetically, if it's in your community. Luckily, what we have learned uh, so far is that there does not appear to be a greater risk for infants uh, who are born uh, to, to pregnant women who have had the infection, because we have seen a few nor is there a great risk for children. One of the interesting and uh, things about this new illness is that children seem to be mostly spared. It's interesting that kids don't get very ill, uh, they don't get infected at the same level as, as adults. As I mentioned earlier, the risk of severe, of more serious illness increases in the older age groups. So for employers, uh, many, many of us over the age of 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, um, as, we, as we age, our risk of of having more serious illness is in fact higher. So it's in the interests of the employers to protect their workplace because they are also protecting themselves. Um, but for pregnant women, there's not a particular concern at the moment and children seem to be spared. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Rosmond, for all great advice you gave us today. Um, and I would like to thank everyone who was watching us today from South Korea, Portugal, Mexico, Brazil, India, Lebanon, Pakistan, Vietnam, Nepal, South Africa, the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Cambodia, United States, Busan, Greece, Ghana, Tanzania, Angola, and many others. As Dr. Rosman said, every day we are learning something new about this virus and we are sharing with you. So please continue following our social media channels for the latest updates, facts, and how to protect yourselves and your loved ones or in your workplace. Also, don't forget to check our website, www.who.int. Thank you very much and keep yourself safe. Thank you very much. Thank you.